Okay, one additional comment I wanted to make about the, the so-called wideband miniature transducers, which is a fancy name for a, a tweeter that goes down relatively low. As I stated before, these are half-inch inverted dome tweeters. It actually has a suspension, a surround, but hey, they have no spider. And um, these drivers, as I mentioned, has a low resonant frequency of about 400 hertz, but also has a very healthy excursion on the order of from uh, mechanical limit to mechanical limit of about plus or minus two millimeters. If you come up here and push these things, that really has a significant amount of excursion for the, the size of the radiator. So these tip as a, in a, an application when used by themselves, it, you know, it could be used down to about 500 hertz. Now in this particular system, we have them crossed over to the three and a half inch mid ranges with a, a acoustic 24 dB per octave Linquist Riley, but the spacing is extremely narrow. I mean, by that I mean the, the spacing is quite small between the tweeters and the mid range. And furthermore, in terms of the wavelength, one kilohertz is quite low, so it's it exhibits essentially no lobes going around horizontally, you know, which helps to you know make the horizontal off axis uniform. So these 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 drivers are, are very nice. They're when you use one of them. But when you put a whole bunch of them together, they can play very loud and dynamic with an extremely good, you know, flat frequency response. One, one comment I'd like to make is when you listen to these CBT arrays, particularly set up in a stereo configuration the way they are now, the ground plane version, is what, what, what should you do? Now, typically, if you go to a consumer electronics show where you're listening to stereo speakers, there's always the sweet spot that you need to sit on. That, that, so typically what you do is you, you, you know, pick up a chair and you set it down in the sweet spot. And of course that's where, that's where you remain. That's where you should, that's what you want to do. You just want to sit here. You can't do anything. You just have to sit here to hear everything. Now the coverage on these is so incredibly uniform that, I mean, I encourage people to, just to get up and walk around. And one of the experiments to do is kind of what we alluded to already is to do the, do the walk-up test, you know, get back a significant distance from the speaker while it's playing music and just simply walk up to it like I'm doing now. And interestingly, it just doesn't get any louder. You know, it doesn't even get any louder when you're standing up that close or, you know, for a specific level there, it doesn't drop off very much when you're going back. In fact, it hardly drops off at all for this, these distances. One other experiment, which is quite interesting, which illustrates the horizontal off-axis uniformity, of course, is you simply just get up and walk around the systems, of course, and, and listen to them. And, you know, and put, your, put your head down low and you know, listen to it way down here. And, you know, and walk up and you know, get up on a chair and listen to it with your head high. And it's, it's very extremely uniform. Now, one additional test that has to do with the stereo imaging and the uh, uniformity of off-axis response is when I was listening to these, not these systems, but some other like systems when I worked for Harman, you walk back to the rear of the room, maybe 10, 12 feet away, 3, 4 meters away, uh, and close your eyes and listen to the center image. And then you can move laterally to hear a good center image. And then with your eyes closed, you walk towards the systems, you know, adjusting your path so that you still hear a good center image. And just continue to walk towards the rays until it starts, still you, you start sounding strange. And I say, I've got off here. You have to walk towards it. And you can, of course, when you're listening to the center image, and even up close right here, you can still hear a good center image with no change in uh, timbre until you get past this point. But it's very uncanny because when you're, when you're listening to these with your eyes closed, it doesn't sound any different. You just keep walking and walking, and it sounds exactly the same, essentially, until you get right up in between them. So that's, a, that's an experiment that you can perform.
Marshall was commenting on the fact that where does the sound appear to come from? Uh, some of you may have experience with straight line arrays. You have a, you know, maybe a six foot, seven foot tall straight line array of loudspeakers. That has the characteristic of no matter where you listen to the array, I mean, here's the it in front of me, and I squat down, you know, listen to it down here, or stand up, it always, it always appears, the sound always appears to come from the speaker that's closest to here, or the one straight ahead if it's a straight line array. So you actually, the, in effect, this might be a criticism you might make of a speaker like that. As you stand up and sit down, the sound appears to come directly in front of you. Whereas on a system like that two-way I had, the three-way I had, it's quite clear when you stand up and sit down that it appears to be coming from the, the uh, you know, the tweeter mid-range, wherever that's located. Now, on the, the CBT array is a bit different. There's two ways. If you look at this and try to assess, or where does the sound appear to be coming from when you look at it? Number one, there's two ways of looking at it. One way is to think about it, what, what's the closest speaker to you? Now, in this case, if I'm looking at it, 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 these speakers down roughly at this height are the ones that are closest to me. The, if you go down or up, those speakers are a little farther away. Now, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is to find the center of curvature of the curved arc, and that's, of course, way behind it down on the floor. So that's another way of, in effect, you can... Uh, in some situations, it may sound like the sound is issuing from a point on the floor out. But I'd be interested in anybody's comments on when you're listening to these things on what, what your personal observations are on that. Because that's, if you wanted to criticize these arrays, that is something that maybe could be criticized because it uh, appears to be coming from a point. Now, if you're down on the floor, it'll sound like it's coming from a speaker down near the floor. Or if you come up here and listen to it, it sound, the sound like, sounds kind of like it sound appears to come from a point, again, from the closest speaker, which would be right here. And, of course, as you sit down and squat, it's gonna, it changes. Now, whether that, from a practical standpoint, is something that could be criticized on these, I don't know. But if anybody has some comments about that, I'm welcome to entertain it, and particularly if you listen to it. But I, I feel that the, the sound feel of this is so extremely uniform that that's what you tune in no matter where you perceive the sound coming from, you can just simply walk around and it, the, the timbre just doesn't change at all. What, the comment I was making to Don was that, that uh, I'll step back in front of the camera here so you can see who I was talking here. Anyway, the, the comment I was making to Don was that when I first saw this design, I was worried that since the sound originates from the floor and or appears, appears to originate from the floor and the center of the, uh, the acoustic radiation is somewhere behind the speaker, uh, essentially on the floor, that this image would sound like it was coming from the floor, which I don't like. I personally like an image that's tall, so that feel, I feel like that I'm listening to real people and real instrumentation. And in fact, on this speaker, that's exactly what happens. Uh, as Don describes it, it, the height that it takes on is up higher on the speaker, and because that, that the center of uh, radiation is way behind the speaker, the lines projected out, and it turns out that when you sit in a chair out here or anywhere along here, the height of the musicians feels natural. It feels like they're at the right height. So anyway, for those of you that think that may be a problem, it is not. Anyway.